It's unclear if Colonel Isaac Newton Lewis ever felt bothered by the lack of recognition, unlike General John Thompson who is remembered for the Tommy gun. The Lewis gun, though, played a crucial role in trench warfare on the Western Front, utilized by the British Army rather than the US Army. Lewis faced obstacles due to political differences with General William Crozier, and ultimately resigned his commission to promote his gun design in Europe. Maxim's designs were used throughout Europe and adopted by the Germans as the MG-08, while the Russians adopted a version of the Maxim machine gun as the MG-10. The British-based Vickers company liked the Maxim design so much they bought the company, refined the machine gun and developed the Vickers machine gun. The European militaries, with war on the horizon, saw the potential for machine guns where the US could not, and Lewis worked with the Birmingham Small Arms Company. BSA, the firm known for its motorcycles, to refine some production difficulties. From there Lewis set up arms Automatique Lewis in Belgium to facilitate the commercial production and sales of the weapon, and the Belgian army was among the earliest customers. Like gun designers before him, Lewis sold the license to produce the weapon instead of actually producing it himself. As a result he received royalty payments and ended up becoming quite wealthy in the process, thanks in no small part to the outbreak of the war. When Germany invaded neutral Belgium in the summer of 1914, the Belgian army became the first military force to field the weapon where it reportedly performed quite well in a defensive role. It should be remembered that at that point the MG-08 was largely a defensive weapon only, but clearly the Belgian army didn't have enough Lewis guns, they were issued with about 20, or really a force large enough, to stop the army of Imperial Germany. As his adopted country was being overrun, Lewis and his factory moved from Belgium to England and full production of the Lewis gun in .303 British began at BSA's facilities under the designation Model 1914. No Lewis guns were produced in Belgium during the war, and any used by the Germans were likely captured on the battlefield. The Lewis gun was gas-operated, with a rate of fire near 600 rounds per minute. It could be operated by a single soldier, unlike the Maxim. Many believe it was water-cooled due to its barrel shroud, but it actually used aluminum to cool the barrel. The shroud was open at the front and back, pulling in air to cool the barrel. The pan magazine held 47 rounds, with bullet noses facing towards the center but the open spaces caused some jamming issues in the trenches. BSA produced the Lewis gun throughout the First World War, the American-based Savage Arms Company also produced a version of the weapon. The two guns were similar, but parts weren't generally interchangeable. One factor was that while the British version was chambered for the .303 ammunition used in the Vickers and Lee Enfield rifles, the Savage version was chambered for the American .30-06, despite the fact that the American military expressed almost no interest in the machine gun. To complicate matters further, Savage produced a version in .303 later in the war that that was exported to Canada, while some 10,000 were ordered by Imperial Russia. The US government had expressed concerns about sending the weapons after the Tsar's abdication, but the pro-monarchy whites did receive a few hundred Lewis guns in 1918-1919, and those were used in the subsequent Russian Civil War. It is unclear whether those were made by BSA or Savage, however. Despite the fact that Savage produced the Lewis gun, when the United States finally went over there, General Crozier reportedly stepped in and even took the weapon away from the U.S. Marines who arrived in France. That may have been the root of the issue on why the French-made Chow Chat has earned such a bad reputation as it was issued over the superior Lewis gun. The Lewis gun was used in the trenches during World War I and on all fronts. It also had an aircraft version, but it lacked the barrel shroud. Unlike the Vickers, the Lewis gun fired from an open bolt, which prevented it from being synchronized with the propeller via an aircraft's interrupter gear. 
Instead, it had to be mounted above the propeller. The guns proved more effective as a defensive weapon on British airships. Despite being remembered for its use in World War I, nearly three times as many Lewis guns were produced for use in World War II, but it was largely relegated to a secondary role by then. The Lewis gun made its first appearance in the 1918 propaganda film Hearts of the World, directed by D.W. Griffith, and was also used by Charlie Chaplin in the 1918 film Shoulder Arms. American stars like Henry Fonda, Gary Cooper, Humphrey Bogart and Steve McQueen also wielded the Lewis gun in various films. The gun also appeared in television shows like the young Indiana Jones Chronicles and Downton Abbey. Additionally, the Lewis gun was a major plot point in the first season of the British period crime drama Peaky Blinders. It also showed up in various aircraft in films like Wings, Hell's Angels, and King Kong, and even made an appearance in the original Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope. Isaac Newton Lewis, the inventor of the gun, would likely have approved of its fame and success.